It seems impossible that an empty desert could hide one of the world's greatest secrets. Yet in this wasteland stands a wondrous enigma, the great pyramids of ancient Egypt. Some call them tombs, others say they were beacons to ancient spacemen. Still others believe they are generators of energy. The secret of the pyramids has eluded men for thousands of years. If they were merely tombs for the pharaohs, why has no mummy ever been found in one? We do know that the ancients built great temples to the forces they believed ruled their lives after death. In sacred places, near the pyramids, Egyptians prepared the most important of their citizens for a journey into life everlasting. No other ancient civilization lavished as much genius on defeating time, on defeating death. Is it possible the Egyptians succeeded? Seldom do the dreams and wisdom of a civilization come together in a single work. It happened once, a very long time ago. In the pure and simple geometry of the pyramids, ancient Egypt may have found answers to profound mysteries. It is for modern men to rediscover them. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Cairo is often called the intellectual capital of the Arab world. It is a reputation founded in antiquity. Despite the crowding, poverty, and conflict of the present, Cairo is irrevocably linked to its brilliant past. On the outskirts of the city are the reminders of an incredible dream. From the summit of the Great Pyramid of Cheops, it is still possible, after 4,000 years, to see ruined temples nestled at the foot of its ageless companion, the Pyramid of Kephron. Long ago, a staggering number of people and immense amounts of material were needed to construct the monoliths. The Egyptians must have had a very good reason for sacrificing so much. What was it? In its finished form, the Great Pyramid was gleaming white and was capped with a block of some special material. The cap may have been polished granite or even gold. Higher than a 40-story building, the Great Pyramid was an awesome monument to some higher order in an untamed desert world. It is awesome still, more than 40 centuries later. Through the ages, the mystery of the pyramid has inspired many theories. Among them, the idea that the pyramid is Earth-based one, remnant of the colonization of Earth by extraterrestrials. Others liken the pyramid to a mammoth radio beacon or a collector of some secret energy source. Whatever it was 4,000 years ago, it is today the single most perplexing monument in the world. What must the builders have been like? There is ample evidence that the ancients were fascinated with time and the rhythm of life along the Nile. Each year, their farmland would be renewed by rich deposits from the flooding river. If the soil could be revived, why not the spirit and body of man? The pyramids may have played a central part in a quest for immortality. Whatever their function, never has history seen such a total commitment of manpower and resources to a single task for so long a time. For each worker in the stone quarries or at the building site, several more would be needed to provide the food and other services required by so vast an enterprise. Unless the ancients had another way. Other great civilizations built artificial mountains, 
They reach above the jungle canopy of Yucatan and Central America. Steps to the stars. None, however, has inspired the intense curiosity that the pyramids of Egypt have. Part of the Egyptian secret may be that theirs was the only civilization to perfect the true pyramid. That burst of genius apparently occurred in the third millennium before Christ at a place called Saqqara, west of modern Cairo. A pharaoh named Zoser commissioned the first known Egyptian pyramid. If Zoser's pyramid was intended to be a tomb, it was an unusual one. Tombs had previously been simple structures of mud brick. Never had they been translated to stone and stacked one atop the other. The next step in the evolution of the true pyramid was to create a smooth facing on a step pyramid. The attempt failed and the pyramid collapsed. Only the central core was left standing. The disaster occurred as work was advancing on another pyramid. Mindful of the lesson, the architect obviously switched to a shallower angle, creating the so-called bent pyramid. The neighboring pyramid is newer and constructed at the same shallow angle as the upper portion of the bent pyramid. Experiments continued for perhaps a thousand years. Incredibly, 80 structures survive, providing vivid examples of pyramid evolution. The glory days of the pyramid age came around 2500 BC, when the pharaoh Cheops ordered a pyramid built at Giza. The angles were steep and the scale gargantuan. Cheops' successor, Kephren, built another pyramid nearby. It is slightly smaller, but no less perfect in symmetry or design. The orthodox view is that the pyramids were constructed using large ramps of brick and earth. These ramps would be constructed at gentle angles so that huge gangs of workers could push the big building blocks upwards. This traditional view holds that once the interior core of the pyramid was finished, the job of surfacing the pyramid would begin at the top and work down. The ramps would be dismantled along the way. How many years of labor must it have taken to move those blocks? When the Greek historian Herodotus stood at the foot of the Great Pyramid in 450 BC, he was told that it was built in 30 years by a rotating workforce of 120,000 men. Kephren's pyramid must have required a similar effort. It should be remembered that the Egyptians accomplished other feats in their golden age. They developed surgery, plotted the movements of their stars, and worked with advanced mathematics. What the ancients accomplished, they apparently did without benefit of the pulley or block and tackle. It is clear, however, that the Egyptians had developed the powers of their minds to a high degree. Science is only beginning to learn what those powers can mean. The simple and amazing fact is that the Egyptians consistently built on a colossal scale. If we had only their monuments and temples to judge them by, we would have to assume they were a race of giants. did the Sphinx guard? Was there something inside the pyramid? In the 9th century AD, an Arab prince named Mahmoud rode to the pyramids with no thought of their grandeur. It was treasure he was after. His men set to work with gunpowder and battering rams. When they had breached the outer defenses of the pyramid, they found only a labyrinth of passageways and chambers. They were empty. The secret had not yielded to force. The Great Pyramid is unique in the complexity of its interior. 
slicing the pyramid from north to south, we get this view. Our scale is exaggerated for a better look at the design. The pyramid rests on a central mound of uncleared earth, perhaps left as a base for constructing the first few levels of blocks. The entrance is in the north face, 55 feet above the ground. A corridor extends 60 feet down into the pyramid, where it joins another corridor 129 feet in length. This corridor leads by another passageway to the so-called Queen's Chamber and to a gallery 153 feet long and 28 feet high. Beyond this magnificent gallery is the King's Chamber, repository of one of mankind's most enduring mysteries. Today, visitors can see the chamber just as it was when it was opened a thousand years ago. It may indeed have been intended as the final resting place for Cheops. No body has been found, however, and the rough finish of the granite centerpiece may indicate that the builders changed their minds. But here, question piles upon question. Another puzzle is the existence of shafts extending from the King's Chamber and the Grand Gallery to the surface of the pyramid. They may have been designed simply for ventilation, or they may have worked to align the pyramid with some planet or star which could be sighted through the shaft at regular intervals during the Earth's movement through the heavens. Surviving records of the Pyramid Age indicate that the Egyptians had an advanced knowledge of astronomy. This could explain how the faces of the pyramid are so precisely aligned with the cardinal points of the compass. It does not explain why it was so important for the pyramids to be perfectly tuned to the stars. The architectural patterns established so long ago by the best minds of Egypt are still in use today. Although no one knows anything for sure about the origin or purpose of the true pyramid, many believe they can tap its supposed powers. Belief in pyramid power has generated a multi-million dollar industry. Pyramid models are thought to be able to perform a variety of miracles, from enhancing sexual potency to mummifying meat and sharpening razor blades. Others see, in the dimensions of the Great Pyramid, a detailed forecast of humanity's future. The future never seemed to be in doubt for the ancients. Scholars have labored for years over the hauntingly beautiful carvings that decorate the great monuments of Egypt. They tell us that the most important qualities of life were harmony with the gods and the permanence of the established order. In the panorama of Egypt's 27 centuries of unparalleled accomplishments, there was not the slightest indication that anyone thought it would ever come to an end. Yet it did. But why? Perhaps a clue lies in the belief that even the lifetime of the humblest peasant could extend beyond the grave. There was one condition. The body must remain preserved and undisturbed. The rites of death were performed in elaborate temples, way stations for the immortal soul. Preparation of the body took 70 days. Internal organs were removed and the shell of the body treated with salts and exotic oils. Enough mummies have been found to testify to the skill of the ancient technicians of immortality. Is it possible the Egyptians dreamed of a day when techniques more advanced than their own could restore vigor to dry flesh? Scientists are using modern techniques on the mummies, not to restore them to life, of course, but to learn something of the remarkable people who built pyramids and dreamed of life everlasting. X-rays reveal that the Egyptian of the period was small in stature and likely to fall victim to the same diseases which afflict mankind today. If the deceased was of noble blood, his funeral would include a symbolic boat. The boat would be borne by priests in the guise of the deities who would ensure that the spirit was ready for a voyage to the kingdom of the dead. There would be a preliminary voyage across the River Nile to the West Bank where cities of the dead were traditionally built. After the Pyramid Age, the greatest of these was the Valley of the Kings in Upper Egypt.
It was in the Valley of the Kings that Howard Carter discovered the undisturbed tomb of Tutankhamun. The discovery remains the richest in the history of Egyptian archaeology. Tutankhamun was a minor king who died young after a brief reign. Cheops reigned more than 20 years and had the wealth and the power to construct one of the wonders of the world. If the mortuary temple near the Great Pyramid is any indication, Cheops' funeral must have been a far more lavish affair. If he was buried in the pyramid, he may be there still, and with him, treasure beyond anything seen so far. Small wonder Cheops took precautions. Once Cheops was entombed, the pyramid was sealed by workers inside. Starting with the ascending corridor, they would push or drop large blocks into each connection with another corridor. Did the workers then perish with their dead king? Probably not. A crude passageway has been found which starts deep beneath the pyramid and eventually leads back outside. The workers charged with protecting Cheops for all eternity apparently protected themselves with a hidden way out. It may be that the hidden way out provided looters with access to Cheops' tomb. It is just as likely that Cheops' secret is still safely locked inside the pyramid. At Stanford Research Laboratory in Menlo Park, California, a team directed by geophysicist Lambert Dolphin is preparing another assault on the secrets of the pyramid. The uh, Great Pyramid is an example of a structure beautifully finished on the exterior originally. The casing stones were so perfect. Where you see them in place, they're beautifully accurately finished. But the interior stones are very rough. When you can crawl inside the interior passages, uh, the tourist doesn't see. The interior construction is rough. Uh, that says to me that no astronauts from outer space using laser stone cutting tools built the pyramids. We put razor blades inside the real pyramids and, and uh, flowers and fruit. Uh, the, our experience last time in the Pyramid of Chaos was that the razor blades rusted, the uh, flowers wilted, and rats ate the fruit. So firsthand we have no evidence of pyramid power operating in the real pyramids. I personally am very skeptical about the power of the pyramids to influence human behavior or sharpen razor blades, apart from the strong powers of human suggestion in a belief system. When people believe in something strongly, they can make it come true. And that's pyramidology, and then that's a lot of uh, other phenomenon as well. I'm skeptical also about lost golden tablets from Atlantis being buried in the area. I don't believe the Egyptians needed some kind of esoteric outer space technology to do what they did. What they did was very impressive. 100,000 men working for 30 years is an awful lot of labor and effort to build one pyramid. And that kind of construction went on for two or 300 years. Dr. Dolphin is pioneering a new technology which may enable archeologists to peer through the pyramids electronically without destroying them. Our work in 1974 using radar was unsuccessful because radio signals do not penetrate the pyramids well. The sound, the radio waves are absorbed in the damp stone. We went back, however, last February with uh, sound waves, acoustic sounding techniques, and found a number of anomalies. Places in the pyramids, around the pyramids, where there appear to be either chambers, cracks, either man-made or natural. An example of an anomaly which we think needs to be checked further is an apparent cavity in between the king's chamber and the queen's chamber in the Pyramid of Chaos. Our sounder indicates something there where there ought to be solid rock. If there is a hidden chamber in the pyramid, will it contain unimaginable treasure? Or will it be just another cipher, leaving the long rest of Chaos undisturbed? and the secrets of the pyramids intact.
As the treasures of Tutankhamun tour the United States, it is clear that interest in Egyptology has never been greater. Perhaps people are responding to a dissatisfaction with the way modern thinkers view the world, a yearning to understand a more ancient and tranquil wisdom. I certainly believe that Western science has deep demythologized our contemporary society too much, that there really is mystery uh, all around us. I'm dedicated to the rediscovery of the mystery in life, to the unknown, to the uh, unusual, to the rare. I think that Egypt is a place where there are many exciting discoveries yet to be made. The pyramids still have their secrets. Uh, the discoveries to be made in the years to come are likely to be dramatic and sensational as man learns more about himself and his origins. And uh, Cairo itself is a city of mystery. The East is, a, is an exotic place. It, it stirs the, the very best in man. And I think we've lost that kind of consciousness in the, in the course of becoming Western civilized man. Perhaps the ultimate accomplishment of the pyramid builders is yet to be realized. Their monuments may one day lead us to rediscover the greater wonder that is the mind of man.